What is going on everybody, Estas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, just like every Sunday, we're going to be talking about 10 stocks that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the fourth week, this upcoming week in May of 2019. And out of those 10 stocks, some of them are actually ones that you ended up calling out either in the comment section on Friday's video or in the call out section in our Discord group chat. So if you did end up shouting one of those out. Thank you for the call out and I will get to that in this video. And for all you new viewers out there, typically every single Sunday, pretty much every single Sunday over the past couple of months now, I've been making videos like this, kind of going over my watch list, my thoughts on these couple of stocks and my mindset for the upcoming week because typically on Sundays this is when I'm planning out stocks I'm trading my plan for the upcoming week what my thoughts are on the market and I take a little bit you know sometimes an hour sometimes a couple of hours just doing some research and planning because I find Doing this on the weekend is how you get ahead of other people, you know, get ahead of the competition in terms of trading, and you just get to learn more, you speed up your learning, and you get better at trading, quite frankly, right, and understanding movement in the stock market. So that's what I'm typically doing every Sunday, and if you want to see further content like this for me and you're not yet subscribed to the channel, feel free to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video hit that like button it really does support me and supports the channel in general and let's get right into it guys so the S&P 500 um it was kind of on a roller coaster for these past couple of weeks right let's just do a quick little 60 second uh gist here a breakdown of what ended up happening this past week we noticed over the past two weeks, we've been seeing selling off, and now the past week mostly has been a recovery, right? We noticed the bottoming out at about $2,800. We recovered up to about $2,885 here, and on Friday, we ended up getting rejected a bit by this 180 simple moving average here on the 10-day, 30-minute chart, as well as this 20-day, one-hour chart. So we had a couple of recovery days here. We're looking like we're pulling back here. This could be the start of potentially a downwards trend or the continuation of the overall downwards trend here. And if we see a break uh, below the 50 SMA here tomorrow on the SPX, that's going to be pretty confirming that we're heading back down in the S&P 500. And let's say we pop above here. Let's say we end up trending back up. Let's say we get back into the $2,900 level. We end up breaking above this 180 SMA resistance. That would be probably most likely, uh, you know, really on a technical basis here, it definitely would be the continuation of this uptrend will be you know, pushing up at that point, and who knows, we might be hitting all-time highs again. We may be testing 2950 again, which is a resistance from a couple of, uh, you know, trading weeks ago. These are just a couple of different scenarios, and if you guys want to see a further breakdown on the market's performance last week, just go check out a couple of videos from last week. I'm uploading every single day during the week, breaking down the market's movements. In the beginning of those videos, I'm typically going over the market's movement for that that particular day in around 5-10 minutes. So if you want to see a specific day of the market's movement and my analysis of it, just go check out those old videos. So let's just kind of get right into it, guys. You know, right now my mindset is to just be cautious. The market's in a funky spot. Very, very volatile. I'm mostly cash as of right now, but I'm still watching stocks, of course. I'm still looking to trade. I'm still looking to hop in, but during different times, during volatile times like this, my strategy tends to shift, right? I'm not really focusing on, you know, one, two, three week swing trades. I'm mostly focusing on day trading the, the swings of the market, to be quite frank, because when it's volatile out there, the s and up 2% one day, down 2% the next, and there's just a bunch of big swings. So this brings me to the top 10 stocks that I'm personally watching, and of course, some that you guys are watching in there that I personally see potential in as well, with the first one being Johnson & Johnson, guys. Ticker symbol J&J. &J. Johnson & Johnson is one 
that is looking quite, pretty uh, quite attractive right now on a technical basis, right? We noticed a couple of months ago, this is probably, um, this is really old news at this point, but for those of you guys that don't know, uh, the stock went from 150 down to about 121 due to asbestos being one of their products. This kind of freaked everybody out. It dropped the stock 10, 15%. But since then, it's been on a very nice, slow recovery with an upward trajected uh, pattern here, right? The bottom at 120, the next one's a higher low at 127, next one's at 134, which is a higher low. The uptrend's intact. We popped up to a higher high at about 143-ish a couple of trading weeks ago. We pulled down to about 136, which is a higher low from the previous, which means the uptrend is still intact. And now we're looking to fight up and continue this uptrend. So J&J is a value play out there, meaning it doesn't swing as crazy as some of these growth stocks when the markets are volatile. So this could be a quote-unquote safer play over the next couple of trading weeks as these, these markets get volatile and if J&J &J continues to confirm its push to the upside, right? So as of now, we're seeing higher highs, higher lows on a smaller term basis here since we bottomed out on Johnson & Johnson and we can see this on the 10-day 30-minute. We're noticing since we pulled back, right? We've actually broken out of the moving average resistances, and now it's looking like we're holding those levels as new support. So on a smaller term basis, I would love to see J&J &J get back into the 140s at that point. If we're in the 140s, guys, we're going to be trending above the 50 SMA here on the 184-hour chart, and that's going to be the last confirming factor, in my opinion, for this continuation of the uptrend. And at that point, J&J &J is going to be looking very solid as a play. The RSI is looking pretty solid right now as well. They uh, reported earnings a couple of weeks ago, so we don't really have to worry about an earnings play shifting the movement heavily to the upside or the downside, which would affect our decision making. Everything is just looking pretty good. All we need to see is that confirming sign. So J&J &J is the number one stock that I'm watching, and there's honestly no particular order in um, you know how much I like the stock for this upcoming week, you know, in terms of 1 to 10, I kind of just throw them in there randomly and just talk about them in this little order that I have on my piece of paper right here. So TVIX slash SQQQ are two kind of volatility uh, short market ETFs that I'm watching. And by short market ETFs, I mean these two do well when the markets are doing poorly and when the markets are very volatile. So TVIX typically goes up when the overall market is selling off and when the VIX is going crazy to the upside, right? When the VIX, the volatility index is pushing up heavily and the markets are selling off, TVIX is usually due doing amazing, right? We saw literally when the market sold off heavily last week or two weeks ago, whenever that ended up being, you know, TVIX had a 40% day. And at that point, you know, the VIX was up like four or five dollars. You know, it was just going crazy, right? So TVIX is one that I'm always watching when the markets are volatile and when the markets are typically selling off, which is where we kind of are you know, right now in the current state of the market. So TVIX, if the markets sell off this week, you know, this is going to be a very good play. If the if the markets are volatile this week, this is going to be a very good play as well. So SQQQ is one that is also a market short ETF. This one doesn't really rely on the VIX. This is more one that tracks directly, actually, the NASDAQ 100, which is the NASDAQ um, index here. When the NASDAQ NASDAQ's going down, SQQQ is going up. So that's all you need to know pretty much, right? If the uh, SQQQ is really up pre-market, if we're seeing NASDAQ markets in general are selling off, this would be a very good play. So SQQQ, definitely on my watch list, and I'm really just looking to trade this if I see signs that the markets are going to push down, right? That's just the honest truth about this. So TQQQ on the flip side is the third one that I'm watching for this upcoming week, and this is in case, let's say, the markets go up in price, right? SQQQ, like we just said, tracks the NASDAQ 100, 
it's going up when the NASDAQ is selling off. But on the flip side, TQQQ, which is actually one I traded on Friday, does well. It goes up in price when the NASDAQ 100, the NQ here, is actually going up in price, right? So this follows the direction of the market, hence why it's been doing well over these past couple of uh, trading weeks, right? The market's been recovering really the past couple of months at this point. It's been doing very, very well. So if you guys want to see a more in-depth video on these three market ETFs that I just talked about, go check out Friday's video. I uploaded a video called Four Market ETFs to Trade When the Markets Are Volatile. I go deeper into these three and an additional one that I didn't mention um, in this video. So so those are really important during volatile times, guys, because they're just really, really useful to hop in and out of when some sometimes individual stocks are more difficult to find in terms of trades. You can always rely on these ones to do well, you know, if you pick the right side, you know, when the markets are volatile, right? So the fourth one that I want to talk about is J JNUG, JDST, the gold ETFs that we trade, that I trade and talk about on this channel. So JNUG, um, you know, these are gold ETFs. They, they, they go by uh, slash GC. You can also look at GDX, which is a uh, ETF trust gold miners ETF. This is a bit more accurate in terms of uh, tracking JNUG and JDST. And how these work, guys, is pretty much JNUG. Whenever it's going uh, up in price, that means gold GDX is going up in price, right? Whenever GDX gold is going down in price, JDST is going up in price and JNUG is going down. So typically JNUG just follows the movement of gold. And we're noticing here, JNUG is kind of on a support at about $6.72. This general area of about $6 to $6.50 has been a support for JNUG here, stemming back a couple of months ago, actually, towards the, the end of 2018. We saw that big run, and now we're pulling back down to these levels again, where it's kind of making JNUG attractive. And if we're looking at GDX very quickly, you know, it's the same thing. And we're noticing a slight breakout to the upside here on a shorter term basis. We're kind of noticing a potential breakout, right? Higher low, higher low, and now we're popping up. Now I would want to see if GDX ends up getting back up to let's say $20.95 if it breaks out of $21 flat you know that could be a huge move to the upside for GDX which would end up shooting up uh, JNUG and of course at that point gold is probably going to be pushing up it is going to be going up as well so I would say at this point guys you know, GDX, especially if it breaks out of this 180 SMA resistance here, that's going to be a pretty bullish move. And if we break out of 21, that could be the first bullish move we need to see before we get to the 180 SMA. And I see a bunch of margin there, honestly. If GDX gets up to 21 and breaks and maybe tests up to 2150, you know, JNUG is going to be at a huge... um. Uh, green up is going to have huge green upside at that point. So JNUG is looking good. But on the flip side, if GDX, let's say it sells off and starts to get back down to the 19 level, maybe high 19s, maybe we break this $20 support, JDST is going to be the better play at that point because at that point, GDX is going to be just continuing its downtrend. G Gold in general is most likely it is going to be downtrending at that point as well. And that's something that we wouldn't want to hop in on the JNUG side, we might as well just flip to the JDST and play the bear ETF, right? So the fifth stock I want to talk about in today's video, I, I talked about it in last video as well, is Tesla, guys. So Tesla, this is a stock that's been mo monstrously beaten down with a baseball bat, right? From 380 down to $200 right now nearly. This stock has almost lost half of its value in about less than a year, right? This is absolutely unbelievable. And I've been getting a bunch of questions on Tesla stocks. Are you looking to swing trade Tesla? Are you buying Tesla? Are you day trading Tesla? And the truth is, guys, I don't want to buy more shares of Tesla until we get to 
under the $200 level, to be honest. That's what I'm personally waiting for in my long-term portfolio. In terms of swing trading, I am not looking to swing trade Tesla until we see a break out of these moving averages here on the 184-hour chart to the upside. I would need to see at least a break out of like 250, 260, 270 to even consider swing trading Tesla at this point. Or, you know, if we end up getting low enough and we start to see a pushback up towards the resistance of the 50 SMA, that could be maybe a short two, three day swing trade. But again, that's kind of going against my own rules of trade or swing trading stocks rather that are downtrending, right? I don't really do that, but maybe, you know, a day trade on Tesla would be applicable here if we were able to maybe bottom out and slowly start to push up and test that 50 SMA. So right now, the way I'm viewing Tesla is it's pretty good. Uh, it's a pretty good day tradable stock if we do end up finding a bottom which could happen this week, honestly, guys, and we start to see a bit of recovery to the upside here, right? If we maybe bottom out hypothetically here, not saying this is going to happen, let's say we bottom out at 205, right? We start to see some consolidation, and then we start to see a pop back up. Just take a look at how much margin would be open at that point, right? From 205, maybe up to uh, the 50 SMA at that point would be maybe like 225 if this continues its downwards push. You know, that would give us an 8% potential on Tesla, guys. So I'm watching it mainly as a day trade or maybe a very short swing trade, but probably not because that's going against my rules. Not saying you shouldn't swing trade it, but for me, I'm not going to swing trade it, mostly looking to day trade it because we've seen Tesla, you know, like we've seen it fall $17 here on one day. We've seen it go up that amount in one day, right? Which is a very, very nice move for a day trade, right? Imagine a stock going up 8%. You day trade it. That would be nice if you got like 3 4% out of that, right? So that's what I'm looking for in Tesla stock. So the next one I want to talk about today is Disney stock, guys, D-I-S. So Disney right now, you know, this is the, this is one that's... Um that was, uh, uh, what's it called, recommended or shouted out by one of the subscribers. And I'm not really liking Disney at these levels right now. It's kind of, to me, looking like it wants to continue to fall and maybe retest this 180 SMA. And let me explain why, guys. Take a look at this. We're noticing the big pop-up to 143. We sold off the 131, and we struggled to really retest the 140s, right? We actually popped up to about 136, which take a look at the pattern is actually a, a lower high from the previous, right? We sold off to 130, which was a lower low from the previous. We popped up to 136-ish, 135, and now it seems like we're selling off again. So this does kind of seem like the beginning of a downwards trending lower high, lower low pattern on Disney, right? If we were to, let's say, sell off and maybe get back down to 130, crack 130 and get into the 120s, and then we slowly test this 180 SMA, which at that point, right, might be at around 128, and we hold that level, that could be a pretty good entry point on Disney. But from what I'm seeing right now, I honestly think the hype is slowly starting to shift away from Disney because we saw a bunch of hype regarding their streaming service, push the stock up a ton. And typically, guys, when that happens, a stock gets pushed up a ton. You know, sometimes after a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two, the hype around that push up slowly starts to die down. And this is this is probably what's happening right now, right? It's slowly starting to die down. And if we get to these levels here, I think that could be a good entry point on DIS. So the next one is Baba. Uh, ticker symbol BABA -B -A. and BABA is actually another one of these stocks that's gotten pretty beaten down here over the past couple of weeks we're noticing right now <coughs> excuse me we're noticing right now BABA is actually at about a 168 169, 170-ish level of support, right? We're noticing how the level we're at right now, if we're bringing out my drawing tool very quickly here, we're noticing this level was a support 
back in what day was this? The 10th of May. So about 10 days ago, this was a support. We ended up closing on Friday above that support from 10 days ago. And also it was a resistance from back in the beginning of December in 2018. And we all know at this point when a stock breaks out of a resistance, it becomes a new support. It becomes a support again, right? So we're testing two separate levels of support. I guess you can really say multiple more because this was a resistance again Again, in the beginning of um, towards the middle of September, again, we broke out of it becoming a new uh, support level, right? We're noticing it was a resistance back in the end of January. So this is a pretty strong level here, a technical level over the past couple of months for Alibaba. I would say if we broke this level, which I think is very possible because the pattern right now is still a falling knife in my personal opinion, especially with the trade tensions with China affecting the Chinese stocks and companies very heavily as we've seen with some other stocks. You know, I think this could definitely fall further here to, to be completely honest, guys. And this is a reason why I'm most likely not going to touch Baba unless it does somehow hold above here. But again, if we see a break, even a sudden break, that can cause more selling on a technical level here on BABA because again, it's like we're moving to a different tier of the stock, right? We're noticing, you know, once we got out of this level, that was us breaking out of the resistances from a couple of months ago and getting into a new tier, right? The 170 level, once we broke out of that, it got us to near the $200 level on the stock, right? Which again is a new tier. And now that we're selling off, if we break this level, it's like we're going back down to the tier that we just came from, which is the 130 to the 170-ish level. And that might issue more selling, right? And again, the, the the tensions with China, you know, all this stuff that's going on regarding the trade war. I think this would put more will put more pressure on the Chinese companies and Baba, which is why I'm really just a spectator on the sidelines right now with this company. But let's say again, miraculously, we break up into the 180s, we break these moving average resistances here. You know, this could be a good trade, but I'm personally not seeing that happening as of right now. So the next one we're going to talk about is Home Depot, ticker symbol HD. And HD, I really like this call out right now due to its um, pullback that we're seeing here. <coughs> we're noticing a pullback on HD from about 207 down to about 190. We're noticing that this pullback opened up, I would say off the top of my head, probably like 10%, right? About 8, 9% margin of profit here on HD. This pullback is also a higher low from the previous. And if we just draw a trend line here, we can see how the market or, uh, you know, this is really the market's Still holding this one on an uptrend from a higher low from the previous, right? So this is not really a hard, difficult pattern to understand. One thing that I am a bit worried about is we're seeing a, the beginning right here of a bearish cross. And a bearish cross is when the 50 SMA or, or whatever smaller uh, increment level of moving average that you use crosses below the 180 SMA, in this case, the yellow line, or or whatever larger increment of moving average uh, that you use, right? Typically, when the smaller SMA crosses below the larger SMA, that's a bearish sign, right? So that kind of worries me, especially because the candlesticks are still trending under these moving averages, right? If we do get rejected tomorrow, we end up selling off. This gets further deeper into the, the bearish cross. That can issue more selling, and that's also breaking the trend line, which in turn would shy me away from trading HD, to be completely honest with you guys. But if we end up popping above here, let's say we break break the 50 SMA and the 180 SMA, we start to get maybe back up to the 196s, 197s, 198s. That's going to be good, in my opinion, for Home Depot HD. So the next one is Verizon, guys, ticker symbol VZ, Verizon Communications. And this is kind of similar to HD in a sense, right? But Verizon broke out of those moving average resistances, unlike HD has, or 
has yet, right? We're noticing here Verizon broke above the 180 SMA. We're pulling back now, actually, and we're retesting that 180 SMA. So I would think at this point, a huge sign for the continuation of this bullish reversal would be if Verizon successfully maintained this 180 SMA and continued to push up, starting to break out of other levels of resistance that we're seeing here that are coming up, right? Take a look at this one right here. It's at about $58, right? We're noticing a bit of a rejection there. If we broke out of this one this week, you know, we could be testing upwards of $61 in the next couple of weeks because that would be the channel that we're trading in at that point in time if we were to break out of that resistance in terms of Verizon. But everything is looking solid right now in terms of the reversal trend to the upside, right? It's looking pretty good on VZ Verizon Communications. So the next one, the last one that I want to talk about is PG Procter & Gamble. This one, guys, has been doing very well while the market has been selling off like crazy. We're noticing, like I talked about in last week's video, v, uh, PG, I was about to say VZ, PG, ended up breaking the 107 level of resistance, and now we're all the way up to 108, and we're looking to retest that level of resistance, previous resistance, as a new support, right? So typically, I talked about this in a video, but typically... When the markets are volatile, when the stocks, growth stocks are selling off, a lot of people are flooding their money into value plays like Procter & Gamble, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, J&J, &J, and a bunch of others. And you notice how these stocks end up doing better than the growth stocks during volatile times. And PG is no exception to that. Or, or, or uh, yeah, no exception to that, right? This stock does very well during volatile times. And I do plan on trading this one if the markets do get volatile again this week and especially if we do end up just maintaining 107 guys I would love to see us hold this resistance old resistance as a new support and for us to continue to truck up maybe into the one tens so that's it for this video guys if you enjoy this video feel free to go down below and hit the like button again it really supports me and supports the channel in general if you want to see more content from me feel free to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do make a video and drop a comment down below let me know what you guys think about these stocks what are your plans for this upcoming week I would love to to know. So I appreciate, as always, all you guys watching. It means a lot for you to take time out of your busy days, come to the channel, watch me. It means a lot to me, and I will cherish that forever. So I'll catch you all in the next video. Have a good one, guys. Peace out.